Sunday, February 4th, 2007. Saudi Aramco and Jan de Nul signed the contracts for the Manifa Field Causeway and Island Construction Project. Jan de Nul will engineer, procure and construct 25 crude oil drilling and production islands on the east coast of Saudi Arabia in the Arabian Gulf, about 250 kilometers south of Kuwait, a work site the size of Manhattan Island. The combined value of the lump sum turnkey contracts makes it one of the largest dredging contracts in recent years, worth one billion dollars. The task ahead for Jan de Nul is of mythological proportions. In three years' time, to design and build, in cooperation with local and international subcontractors, 25 oil drilling and production islands, each with 10 drilling wells for heavy-duty crude and two water injection islands. Engineer and construct causeways with a total length of 41 kilometers, including 14 bridges, of which the longest is 2.4 kilometers. The construction scheme also includes the development of three berthing areas and two roll-on, roll-off facilities for supply vessels and dredging works for pipeline and cable shore approaches. The short track project requires a flying start. Only a few weeks later, on the 8th of March 2007, Jan de Nul's first hopper dredger, the Amerigo Vespucci, arrives in the Arabian Gulf to start reclaiming the first island. The location is critically complex. The shallow waters of Manifa oil field make it impossible to use common offshore oil drilling platforms. For that reason, Saudi Aramco opted for the construction of 25 oil drilling islands, covering the entire Manifa oil field. Shallow does not mean quiet waters, though. The islands that Jan de Nul is building need to be able to resist the 100-year storms within a design life of 50 years. Physical wave model tests were carried out during the detailed engineering phase by Jan de Nul's in-house engineering department, with the cooperation of the University of Ghent in Belgium. Shallow also means that only vessels with limited draft can be deployed in Manifa, adding another complexity to the construction. Two types of dredger are used. Cutter suction dredgers are stationary dredgers using spuds and a rotating cutter. They're typically used in harder soil conditions. The materials dredged are pumped into a split barge that discharges its load on the required dumping location or are discharged using floating pipelines to the sand field. Trailing suction hopper dredgers will dredge the sand materials from the sea bottom and discharge from the hopper by using the rainbow technique or floating pipelines directly to the sand field. The construction fleet, in peak periods more than 100 pieces, consists of several cutter suction dredgers and trailing hopper dredgers, split hopper barges and about 50 auxiliary vessels varying from tugboats, multicats, crew vessels, fuel vessels and 40 barges and pontoons including several heavy lift crane barges, positioning pontoons, floating workshops and floating batching plants for offshore concrete. 300 pieces of heavy machinery will be put to work. A workforce of 3,000 laborers, crew, foremen, supervisors, engineers, quality inspectors and safety officers is engaged to be able to finish the works within the tight construction schedule. During the Manifa Field Causeway and Island construction project, a total of 40 million cubic meters of sand and more than 12 million tons of rocks are displaced. Each island has a surface of 90,000 square meters, corresponding to nine soccer fields. To take an island approximately four meters above sea level, 900,000 cubic meters of sand are required. Typically, the islands are reclaimed with the dredges, up to a level that will allow the bulldozers and wheel loaders to complete the sand reclamation up to the final level. Heavy excavators with extended booms bring the island its final shape by trimming and profiling the island's slope. Each excavator and crane has its own computerized survey system using DGPS, allowing to work with an accuracy of 10 centimeters. The system uh, exists uh, mainly of uh, three components. These three uh, signals go to the computer, so uh, the, the operator knows exactly how high the bucket is from the, from the actual design, and he knows how much material he has to take off to reach uh, the correct height. Immediately after the trimming, 
The profiled sand is given protection against the action of current and waves. Sheets of geotextile imported from Belgium and stitched together on site are put on top of the sand and covered with different sizes of ballast material. Teams of divers make sure that there's sufficient overlap between each of the sheets, a critical task to prevent the profiled sand slope of the islands being washed away during tides and current action. A rock revetment with rocks of up to five tons each will complete the protection. Different techniques are used to install the rock revetment. The toe of the rock revetment at deepest locations is put in place using rock dumping barges, like the Pompeii. The rocks required to be installed as rock protection on the islands are purchased in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at several quarries up to 600 kilometers inland from the work site. Batches of rock are tested daily before each transport on density and resistance in the laboratory at the quarries and on the site. Actual drop tests are performed, as well as shape and grading verification. A specific overall traffic plan was set up in coordination with Saudi Arabian authorities and Saudi Aramco to guide and coordinate with the different rock suppliers a safe and smooth transport of rock from each quarry to the work site. More than 600 trucks are received daily at the work site. Upon arrival at the site, the weight of trucks and rocks is checked. At the jetty area, the rocks are offloaded from the trucks and stockpiled or immediately loaded onto barges. The barges bring the rocks on location at the islands and causeways where the rocks will be installed using dump trucks, crawler cranes and excavators. Daily production has exceeded the transportation and installation of more than 30,000 tons of rock per day. Once the rock protection is complete, the surface of the islands and causeway is compacted. The islands are finished with a compacted top marl layer. The work in progress is monitored continuously. Here the level of sand compaction is tested. The 27 islands that Jan de Nul raised from the seabed will soon be heaving with heavy-duty activity and their stability is of the utmost importance to Aramco's oil production. Finally, before handing over the islands as a drill site to Saudi Aramco, huge metal drilling tubes are driven into the islands and finished with fiberglass covers. Jan de Nul not only built 27 islands, but also 41 kilometers of causeway and bridges for Aramco. Bridge piles were driven up to 22 meters deep in the seabed, the first step in the construction of the bridges. Bridges were chosen and not just dikes to allow for the continued flow of the tides in and out of the bay and to preserve the original water quality, a guarantee for local fauna and flora. The Manifa Bay is an important breeding area for shrimp. A concrete prefabrication yard to produce the concrete bridge elements and concrete cable channels was constructed on site. For the construction of the 14 bridges, the key structures and the other civil works, a total volume of 150,000 cubic meters of concrete was produced. At the start and end of the main causeway, three berthing areas and two roll-on, roll-off facilities were constructed to accommodate Saudi Aramco supply vessels during drilling operations.
Finally, the bridges and causeway are asphalted, and here again, every detail counts. The Manifa worksite was audited by Lloyd's Certification Bureau for ISO 9001 standards for quality, for OSAS 1801 standards for safety, and for ISO 1401 environmental standard. The Belgian International Technical Control Bureau, SECO, visited Manifa monthly to follow up on the project design, engineering and construction. The Manifa Field Causeway and Island Construction Project was a complex, multitask operation. On shore, specialist workshops had to be set up to maintain and repair the equipment and keep it in optimum running condition. The severe weather conditions and the many heavy-duty tasks took their toll on the machinery that was deployed, resulting in a high rate of wear and tear. The human workforce itself also was the focus of constant attention. So, this one, you look, see, the lock pin already gone and back set green also gone. That is, that meaning, this is already finished, no more use, okay? A specialist health, safety and environmental team gave the workforce training and monitored and inspected the work site on a continuous basis. Sign boards were posted all over the site to increase safety awareness. This included, but was certainly not limited to, making sure people were wearing their personal protection equipment, their helmet, safety jacket and their life jacket when working on the ships, and making sure people drank enough while working in this extreme climate. Sign boards also addressed environmental awareness and asked the workforce not to leave empty drinking bottles or other bottles anywhere on the site. More than 40 nationalities worked together on the Manifa project. To lodge them, an accommodation camp, more than up to the usual standards, was built from scratch in the desert. At its peak, the camp had more than 2,000 residents. Belgian chef de cuisine supervised the kitchens. There too, a knife for detail was key. And, uh, Daily we prepare and serve 5,000 plates for 20 different nationalities, which results in four different types of cuisine, European, Indian, Filipino and Pakistani. Also we serve 600 plates on site, pre-packed meals. No need to tell you that it needs a lot of organization. The Manifa oil field is expected to add 900,000 barrels per day of production capacity to the world's crude oil production. Jan de Nul is truly proud that Saudi Aramco showed trust in its capabilities and that Jan de Nul has been able to contribute to the realization of this giant project, which will play an important role in the overall worldwide oil production.